Thanks for clarifying, Doctor. And up next, we have Nancy. Nancy, we're looking forward to your question for Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. Yes. Hi. Thank you, Dr. Esselstyn, um, for your talk. I have a question about your fill, uh, slide on the birth of a plaque. Um, for for the atherosclerotic plaque, I mean, does that depend on the origin, where the plaque originates, the size? and the number of plaques? In other words, is there stages of plaques um, that goes on into the heart? And see, my doctor uh, says um, that, um, that uh, I, you know, I need to um, take a statin to help with my uh, cholesterol, L, you know, the good cholesterol, but also the fact that I have atherosclerosis. But I feel that does the origin of the plaque um, affects whether you have the atherosclerosis? I mean, if the plaque is situated outside the artery, is that less serious than the plaque situated within the artery? And what is the best way to reverse it besides um, the whole food plant-based method? I think that I, I'm gonna be sure I understand the question. The question is, how does the plaque form? And the plaque doesn't form outside the artery. The plaque forms inside the artery. And as the plaque grows, it diminishes the diameter of the artery and it takes tends to block the artery. Now, how, do you, how does that start? The whole process seems to start when you eat food that is going to injure your endothelial lining of the artery. And I went through the, all those foods very carefully with you in our, in our presentation. And the, uh, <clears throat> by avoiding the foods that injure the endothelium, and it comes back strong enough with plenty of nitric oxide, then what happens is you begin to see that the process of reversal will occur. And the best way that I know to do that is with whole food plant-based nutrition. You can talk with your doctor if you want to take a, a statin, but I've, I think I showed you today that some of our most profound reversals of disease occurred in those patients where statins either were not available or they were, had been refused. Thanks, doctor. Up next, we have DF. DF, if you go and, can go ahead with your question. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Assistant. Um, since uh, HDL is no longer found to be um, uh, a good biomarker for heart health. Should we be concerned that someone eating a, a balanced whole food plant-based diet having a reduced or declining HDL? Thank you. Yeah, that's an excellent question. Yeah, it's, we noticed in our, well, first of all, let's take for example, the, the lower limit of normal of HDL for men uh, is 40, all right? We noticed back in 1986, 87, with our first group of men, they all suddenly, within starting our program, they had dropped their HDL cholesterol into the mid 30s, all of them below the accepted normal level of HDL. And at the same time, they were losing weight. At the same time, their symptoms were disappearing. And when we carefully studied them, they were reversing their disease. And <clears throat> there's been a considerable amount of research since then that clearly shows that when someone is eating whole food plant-based nutrition, which is such an anti-inflammatory diet, your liver recognizes this, that your body has so much less inflammation that it is now decreasing the amount of HDL cholesterol that it produces because there's no need for it. As a matter of fact, remember I just said the lower limit was 40. Guess what? The Tara Humara Indians in Northern Mexico, when you measure, measure their HDL cholesterol level, 25, which would drive the unknowing cardiologist absolutely apoplectic. But why? Because their inflammation is so low in their bodies, they eat the, they eat the three sisters, beans, corn, and squash. No nutritional deficiencies. 
Thanks, Doctor. We have just a couple of minutes left. Let's move over to Elise now. Elise, it's either Elise or Mark or Elise and Mark. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much, Dr. Esselstyn, for all you do. My husband and I went plant-based three years ago. My doctor did my uh, cholesterol and my cholesterol dropped from 225 to 170. Every six months he takes it. And since then it's gone back up to 220. I eat no oil, but I do eat a uh, chia seed, flax seed, hemp seed, and a Brazil nut. Is there anything you could recommend? Because he started me on very low dose provostatin and even that didn't work. So I'm staying at 220. Is my body just making it and I should stay on the statin or stop it? Well, I, I, would, want, I would want you to work with your, uh, with your doctor. Uh, I think that the one thing that you might haven't uh, tr perhaps tried is uh, that sometimes will help uh, lowering cholesterol is the, uh, you heard me mention this before, is the AMLA powder. That's A-M, like in mother, L-A, AMLA powder. It's from gooseberries. That seems to help lower cholesterol and lower triglycerides. Doctor, thank you very much. Up next, we have Mark. Mark, if you'd go ahead with your question. Yes, thank you for your lecture. If one was uh, 65 years old um, and had an injection fraction of 35, but no apparent arterial disease, do you have any additional suggestions for increasing EF without incorporating drugs? Uh, yeah, you have to, you, what, what I, I think the first thing that has to happen is somebody has got to have an absolutely rock solid diagnosis of what is causing this heart failure. Is it hypertension? Is it valve disease? Uh, is it, is it some, perhaps, uh, even some medication? That may be creating this because really the the only way to have a successful accurate treatment is first of all have to have a rock solid uh, diagnosis of what is the causation of the of the heart failure which is obviously not apparently from any vascular disease good question Thank you so much, doctor. Let's go now to Dave. Dave, if you'd go ahead with your question, please. Hi, Dr. Esselstyn. Again, thank you for everything that you do. Uh, been on a plant-based diet 100% for the last three years. Quick question for you. I drink a daily cup of coffee, and I know in the past you've mentioned that it's not the best for your endothelium, but wanted to get your opinion. If I just have one cup of black coffee a day, does that affect me health-wise in the long run? Well, I don't like things that injure endothelium. I'll, I'll give you the, the background of the study. What swayed me on this was that there was an Italian study where they had divided the two groups of, of uh, healthy young volunteers. One group was drinking coffee with caffeine. The other was drinking coffee that was decaf. And after they drank the coffee, they had the brachial artery tourniquet test, which is a test for uh, production of nitric oxide. Then they would switch groups. The groups that the farmer was having coffee without caffeine was now having coffee with caffeine. It was always the group that was having coffee with caffeine that diminished their endothelial output of nitric oxide. That's what swayed me. Thank you. 